it is good to be in the Lord's house this morning. And it's good to come and come <coughs> together, and I appreciate the song this morning. And I'm glad y'all are here, and I'm glad to be here. I am somewhat relieved that I have not gotten any calls. Anybody has any disciplines at all from camp? And I pray the Lord for that because that always weighed on my mind that, that we can be back in the world like last year. And I thank the Lord we didn't get there. Um, but I want to again say I uh, enjoyed the week at camp. I was glad to get able to stay home all week. And I was planning on leaving Monday and to go work on something and. And it, the bottom fell out. But it rained and rained and rained. I don't, I don't believe I ever seen that much rain in the third week of July. But uh, and some of y'all ain't either. And y'all were a lot. I ain't gonna say a lot. Y'all are somewhat, more huh? A lot more mature. That yes, that sounds good. I like that language. I'll, I'll adopt that. Okay. Um. But. It is wonderful to, to be here this morning. If you'd like to read along with me, uh, Luke chapter 12. Uh, Luke chapter 12. Verse 49 through 59. 49 through 59. I want to talk to you about discernment. Being able to judge and look at things in the appropriate light. Um... There's many, and, and there's times when we have, a, uh, we look at things the, the wrong way, and our judgment is off. Um, uh, you know, I have misjudged lots of situations in life, and some of those misjudgments were very embarrassing, and uh, you, didn't, you thought one thing was the case, and then something else was, it was dramatically different. Uh, as a pastor, I, I have tried not to judge something before it's time to let something happen over time to actually see what's going on. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the people come to the wrong conclusions. And I, I do want to tell you this, that, that God desires for, for us to reason together. And God actually is the reason, and I, I will trying to get you to understand this as a parent and, and, and as a grandparent uh, there comes a time in a child's life where they're able to reason with God and there's a time in a child's life when they're unable to reason with God they don't have the physical, uh, mental capability to reason with God come let us reason together uh, and so uh, God desires to reason with man where man has the the mental capability to God to try to persuade through uh, uh, speech, word, the word of God. And in, in this text, Jesus is trying to lay out some discernments. One, in, in verses 49 and, and 50 and 51, uh, is that uh, people make assumptions about the effect of Christianity in every circumstance. Um, some people have an ideal of what Christianity ought to do or what Christ should have been trying to accomplish that is not realistic or reality. It is while it is true that Jesus come and at the announcement of his birth, you know, God is saying peace on earth, goodwill to men. The ultimate goal of, of Christ was to bring man at harmony with God, reconciled, as we studied this morning in Sunday school, to be brought back. That was the God's the goal. But Christianity, because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, demands an answer from man. And it puts man in a position by God that they have to make a decision and that decision puts them on one side of a line or another. Look what he says here. I, I have come to send a fire on the earth. And what will if I, it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. How am I straight until it be accomplished? 
Suppose ye I come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. And now, I want you to understand this discernment. Uh, people made a, a judgment that they understood about what Christ was trying to accomplish. Now, while I told you maybe the ultimate goal was for man to be reconciled with God on the earth itself, here in, in the here and now, while that is being accomplished, Christianity draws a great division between men. Not just between men, if you look at this text, it's between homes, where there's two against three and three against two. I think uh, if you will look out in America today, America is as divided as it's ever been, right? Not necessarily uh, uh, predominantly around Christianity, but Christianity is a driving factor in some of the divisions because we have a, a half of, uh, seems like a, a America wants to go one direction and half of America wants to go another. I want you to understand your relationship with Jesus demands you stand for the truth. And that stand will put you at odds with other people, sometimes of your own home. Uh, you know, uh, I will, this is kind of funny, kind of ain't. Uh, most of you may know, uh, I lost my mother, I was uh, about 30 years old, I guess. I was 30. Maybe 29, I can't remember. Sarah might be able to tell me. And, uh, and so my dad lived 10 more years and he, he was getting remarried. And him and this woman moved in together. And uh, I told him just like I tell every one of y'all, I do weddings for free. I told my dad, I said, when I was a kid, you wouldn't ever approve of me doing what you're doing now. Okay? And if I told my daddy that, I'm not going to bend for you. Okay? I believe that if you live with somebody outside the bounds of marriage, you're sinning against a righteous God. That's what the Bible teaches. Now, did I not love my daddy? I love my daddy. And I told him the truth. And I told him I did weddings for free. And he got married. Now, did I like my stepmama? Not necessarily. I'm going to be honest with you. But guess what? I love God more. More. Did I want my daddy to get remarried again? Nope. Nope. I didn't want that. But you have to make a decision about what you're going to stand for. Christianity demands of you making proper decisions based on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, this is what he says. I have a baptism to be baptized with. A baptism to be baptized with. Now listen, he had already got the hands of John the Baptist at that time submitted to water baptism because that's not what he's talking about here. Okay? What kind of baptism is he going to be baptized with? Why is that draws a line in the sand? so to speak, about a personal relationship with him. I have news for you. This baptism that he was baptized with, that he had to accomplish, was his death, burial, and resurrection, uh, if you don't know. You see, Jesus Christ would go to the cross of Calvary, and he would be immersed into the wrath of God for me and you. He suffered the wrath of God so I could be free. That was his baptism. He was baptized with God poured out on him the wrath of me and you. What I deserve. What it would have been like for me to go to eternity of a lake of fire, hellfire and brimstone. God took that equipment, rolled it up, poured it out on the sun that I could be free. I don't know about you, but that demands of me that I take a stand. It demands of me I draw a line. It demands of me I make a decision. I have news for you. No man is going to stand before God after he gave his son on Calvary's cross and have any excuse for rejection of the Son of God. No man. 
I don't care what background they come from, where in life they grew up. Some people have said, what about that far person in that far away corner of the universe? Listen, I, I, I'm going to believe what the Bible says. The Bible says the sound went out for all the earth. Isaiah the prophet said who hath believed our report I have news for you the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was done under a rock it wasn't hid it was broadcast abroad you living in the south I can assure you you have no excuse no excuse whatsoever we live in the Bible belt, right? you know how much Jesus is out there do you, do you realize that even in the pandemic, there's more truth floating around today than there was when we started this deal? Every one of my sermons for the last year are all on YouTube available today. Every Sunday morning sermon. Every one of them is on YouTube. Every one of them. Me and almost every, uh, a lot of other preachers all end up being uh, TV evangelists. Not that every ever one you can go home, you got the right kind of TV, you can pull up YouTube and watch every message I ever preached to lady. I'm sure you're going to find something about Jesus in there somewhere, right? I'm almost positive of it. You don't have to take me from for it. For it. Listen, the sound of what Christ accomplished has went out for all the earth. Man is without excuse. It demands an answer to the death, burial, and resurrection. And I have news for you. Man will give account one day. The Bible says every mouth and every tongue shall confess him. Everyone. Uh, all those people who reject him in the life here and now, one day they're going to stand before him and they're going to call him Lord God Almighty, the man that died on the tree of Calvary. Some of us are going to do it voluntarily. Some of us, others, are going to be propelled to do it in judgment. Understand this. His baptism demands me and you make a stand. It demands, and it, you, you suppose everything you want, right? Uh, you can suppose that Christianity ought to bring great harmony to everything. And you can live a law by land you want to, right? People make suppositions all the time. That don't mean they're good discretionary judgments. Because I have news for you. In the, in the here and now, in the life being you're living, look where Jesus went. What did Christianity do when he was here? They took him, and you have to understand this, they took him, a person that could literally put his hands on a dead man and make him live, could literally take a man that suffered blindness his whole life and he touched him, speak to him, and he get his life back. A man that did everything for, possible for another human being. A man who stayed up all, all night praying for another soul. They took him and took him and led him to a cross of Calvary. They nailed his hands to a tree. They crucified him and he died. He had a baptism to be baptized with. Don't tell me that the earth ain't divided because of it. It is. It will be reconciled one day. Right? When every tongue and every mouth shall confess him. But until then, this is the way it is. And so we can't, can't allow ourselves to have a judgment that we have kind of universal peace because... Uh, some misconceived reality. It's not true. Christianity demands a side. You have to pick. You're going to have to choose. You either have to pick him or reject him, but you will pick. I have news for you. You do nothing, you make a choice. Okay? And some of the other times, them choices are hard. Now, I want you to notice what he says here about at this. He said, from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, two against three. 
The father shall be decided against the son, the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. That sounds like a whole lot of division, right? Some of us understand that. Understand what, how Christianity is divides people. And it just does. It's a natural occurring event. If a person sells out to Jesus, and another person rejects the son, them two people are going to be division between them. Just a just natural occurrence. From that day forward, that it has occurred. The nation of Israel was tore apart based on the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. Y'all don't understand that? Tore apart. Because there was a few people that recognized Jesus as the Son of God. And then other people who would not let that go. They just were rebellious in nature. But not only this. Not only do we have a misconception of peace. You know what true peace is. And what Christianity is ultimately going to do, but it ain't done yet. We have a misconception of what time it is. Now, I know some of y'all can read the Bible, and some of y'all can't, right? I will tell y'all funny. I know I told y'all this before, but y'all were like this. Okay? Um, this is true about me, y'all know. <coughs> Air conditioner man asked me, what time do y'all get out? I said, well, that's a different story. <coughs> These two little boys, they were friends. Right? Two little boys. And so... So he's a little Catholic boy and a little Baptist boy. And a little Catholic boy is not a little Baptist boy to go to church. <coughs> right? A little Catholic boy took a little Baptist boy to church and the priest did this here and waved something. And a little Baptist boy said, Well, what does that mean? And a little Catholic boy told him. And so the priest did something else. And the little Baptist boy said, What does that mean? He told him. And so next week, the little Baptist boy said, Well, come go to church with me. And so uh, they had singing. They had the preacher got up to preach, and the preacher took his watch off and looked at it and laid it on the pulpit so he could see it well. And the little Catholic boy said, What does that mean? And the little Baptist boy said, Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Now, some of us have a hard distinction of time and what time is and what time means. We don't make the most of time. I want you to understand this. Verse 54 says this, and he said unto also to the people, when, she, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, and straightway you see there cometh a shower. And so it is. I mean, that is, it is true. I, I am a great weatherman. When I can see a cloud coming and it's raining, and it's coming by the way, I am better than any meteorologist. I know it's going to rain on my head, most likely. Amen? And... I'm pretty good at predicting heat, too. Look what this says. It says, um, when you see the south wind blow, right? When we know the south wind blow, what's going to happen? He says, you say there will be heat, and it come to pass, right? Now, most of us have lived in Texas long enough, right? I mean, this could be true for right here, right? If the south wind goes blowing, what do I know? It's fixing to warm up. We get a whole lot of south wind, we're going to get a whole lot of heat. Whole lot of that. We understand. We can discern that, right? We can look at the sky and see it's going to rain. We can look at uh, he feel the wind blow and know it's going to get hot. But we cannot discern the time we live in. Look what he says. You hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and you can discern the earth. But how is it you not discern the time? Time. I got news for you. It's time. For a person that don't know Christ, it's time to be saved. If you don't know. It's time right now. The Bible says, Behold, today is the day of salvation. It ain't tomorrow. Nowhere ever in the scriptures it ever asked a person to be saved tomorrow. Ever. You'll never see it. You'll never see it. It's written anywhere. It's always spoke of in the here and now. The Bible demands an answer today. Right now, where you sit, it demands you make a choice about who Jesus is. It doesn't make, ask you to make a choice three days from now. It ain't asking you to make a choice tomorrow. 
Matter of fact, you're not supposed to be thinking about what tomorrow may be like at all. Some of you already planned tomorrow. You planned what you're going to do tomorrow. You planned what you're going to think about tomorrow. But I got news for you. The Bible says today is, considering today is evil enough, you are to carry it first. Today, you are responsible for time. And this time is your time. If you don't know Christ, it's time to know Christ. It's also time. That some people are, are I'm just telling you. Uh, unfortunately, I'm getting older, and uh, I've been in the ministry. Um, next year will be 30 years. Uh, my daughter will be 30 years old tomorrow. Next year, and I said I know it'd be 30 years because I started the ministry uh, when my wife was uh, seven, eight months pregnant. I wonder I didn't have a child early. <laughs> that was a, such a shocker to her, but. Uh, uh, that's how I go. 30 years. In 30 years, I, you know, we waste a lot of time in 30 years. I can look back in my ministry and know I wasted a bunch. Uh, a bunch of time and, and not time to waste. And, and listen, if you think you you got time, you got, you're, you're thinking wrong. The Bible is very clear. It demands you answer now. Uh, not to uh, belittle the point too much, but you really, really, really uh, need to make a decision now. If you know Christ as Savior and you're saying, well, I, when I get my life straightened out, I'm going to serve Him better. Well, guess what? Uh, the Bible will never ask you to put off do make a decision until you've got something straight. You're supposed to give your life over to Jesus and He's supposed to straighten it out if you don't know. You're supposed to surrender all to Him as a saved child of God, throw it all on His table and say, you straighten it out, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll do we're supposed to be out like Isaiah, here I am, Lord, send me. Uh, uh, we can, we can confess our sins, our faults to Him. He'll cleanse us, and then He will take us where He needs us to go. We have a troubled time. But we, we do not discern time well. I, I have news for you. Some of you are running out of time. And you have family members that are running out of time. You have loved ones that time has grown short. One of the frustrating things with Jesus is that he knew these individuals had a short window. Short window. How would you like to be in the position of knowing the future? And knowing that that door is closing. You know the day, the hour is coming. And you're trying to present uh, to an individual to make a decision for that window and door shuts and they keep saying no. And he knows it's coming to a conclusion and an end. And they continue to go down that path. Folks, listen, we got a problem in discerning time. Not only this, we have a problem of understanding when to get something right. I want you to notice this. E, 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 this is what he says, verse 57. E, and why even of yourself judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, Give diligence that thou mayest deliver of him, lest he hail thee to the judge, the judge deliver to the officer, and the officer cast thee in the prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not deliver thence till thou hast paid the last mile. You don't know what great judgment is. Great judgment is not only knowing the time, not only understanding the time, but it's also using the time. Notice what he says about this conflict these two people have, right? He says, when should they take care of what's going on? Is while they're in the way with each other. Before they get to judgment. Before they get to the magistrate. Before he hauls you before the judge. That's a good time to get things worked out. Because once you get to the judge, guess what it is? It's out of your hands, right? Once you... 
If, if you go before a judge and you ain't got to work that before you get there, guess what happens? Who's going to make judgment? Somebody else. I have news for you. Some of y'all have time right now to make it right before you get to the judge. Because I have news for you. Um, some of you, some of you, what you think you're right about, you won't be. You will not be. And you need to make it right the here and now before you get there. Yeah, I, I have this problem with individuals I, that tell me and try to convince me that I ain't going to know until I get there. Folks, I have news for you. Some of you might be satisfied with not knowing until I get there. But I want to know in advance. I know if me and my adversary have it straightened out before I get to the judge, guess what's going to happen at the judge? He's going to have nothing to judge on what basis. You, before you, appear before the righteous judge of heaven. Judge of heaven. You better make sure you have it worked out with the son. You better make sure you have it worked out with the son. This is the true meaning of what this he's really talking about. People have this idea that they'll get to the heavens and God will going to make judgments in favor of them. I have news for you. Apart from Jesus Christ, you have no hope. No hope. Uh, I, I've had people tell me, well, I, I'm going to pray that my good has outweighed my bad. I have news for you. Uh, you're upside down. And uh, uh, God is going, you know, you're not going to like the judgment. You're going to pay every penalty of what you owe. Every penalty. You're going to spend eternity in the, the lake of fire. How much is bad it can it get, y'all? Right? I, I, uh, people ask me of the difference between the, the hell and the lake of fire. And at the great white throne judgment, all those individuals that are in hell are resurrected, brought before the great white throne. Hell is cast into the lake of fire. Then everybody that is found guilty, which is all of them that came out of hell, are then cast into the lake of fire with hell. All I can tell you, if you think hell's bad, just wait till you get in the lake of fire. God's going to turn up the heat. And I don't know how that's possible that I've had a stick of speech in that rub, right? You want to pay every last penny that you owe a righteous God. And because that will never be paid. Never be paid. That means you have to spend forever in the lake of fire. Because you are not going to get, you know, we send people to jail today sometimes, right? And they get 90 days. And then they get out, right? Y'all understand the difference between 90 days and forever? Forever? Never at the end? That's what he says. He says, you're going to pay the last cent you owe. And that's forever. Make that a, a great discernment and a good discernment is make the decision now. Make it while it's time. Make it while you're in the way. Right? If God is dealing with you now, why should you put off that which he's asking you? Why should you put it out in the future thinking you might deal with it in the future? You know how many people? I, I, would, I really don't want to know. I have to think it's sufficient and the number is great. How many people that said I'll be saved tomorrow and tomorrow never came? I, as children of God also said, I want to, I want to serve him tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to clean up my life. When my life gets cleaned up, I'm going to do this. You know how many people actually succeed in that? My advice is surrender all today. Let him worry about the cleaning job. No. I, I, 
I realized why my daddy liked me growing up later in life. When I got a certain age, my daddy caught fish I cleaned. That's a great deal for him. Right? Great deal. He called, I cleaned. I, mean, I, I thought being promoted to the first son was a great thing, you know. I didn't realize that that was a lot of work. Folks, so listen. It is God's job to clean you up. It's not yours. It's he. You're supposed to surrender. Give this. Let him have it all. Do it while there's time. Let's all stand together because I'm out of time. Just for the record, it is news.